All right, how's it going, everyone? Um, let's talk about the back, okay? Because I've gotten, you know, this is kind of the quintessential question about ballet. It's always the back because that was a key feature of Russian ballet, Soviet Russian ballet, um, for a reason. So the back is really the, as I said in the last podcast, I was talking about what ballet is, is a quality of movement. So the back is the key feature of that quality, but um, again, the back is the most complicated part of this puzzle analogy that I used, right? So I'll explain it a little bit, kind of the idea of it, and then, kind of, and then uh, you'll see Svetlana demonstrated a little bit. But this is, but to understand how to get to that point and how to develop it is, is a pretty deep dive pedagogically, okay? So again, we will go through that in the Institute and how that all works. But podcast, look, the podcast is, is really going to be about this. It's just ideas and I'm sharing my perspective with you. N not that interested in talking about um, people that much or, or, or kind of any, any of that tan um, tangential stuff, you know? So it's just really focus on ideas and uh, the Institute and, and sort of like the creative things we're doing, just all that kind of stuff. So ideas and then just sharing what we're doing and my perspective on these various things. So with regard to the back, okay? Um, and again, you're gonna see, you see Solana's back. And again, if, if you try, if, so if people try to imitate that, it's, it's going to go sideways, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. And even if a person is born with a straight back, or they born doesn't mean anything, but let's say they go through adolescence and your back is straight. That isn't enough. That isn't anywhere near enough, right? That doesn't mean, look, having a straight back means that you will develop quicker than somebody with, like my back, like, you know, Sil and I both have goofy backs. Hers is now absolutely straight from training, but, you know, she had, you already know that she had every back problem you can basically have. And, um, in fact, that's how this whole podcast thing got started. But it, even if you have a straight back, when you rotate the hips this way and you add placement to everything, which is what you need to dance ballet, that still is going to affect your back even if it's straight, okay? So having a straight back doesn't um, preclude you from having to still do all the work that everybody else has to do. It's just if your back's healthier, straighter, it takes less time, but you still have to do all the work, okay? Because ballet schools, academies, the big ones tend to, to select straight backs. So, okay, yes, it will save some time, um, I'll do another podcast later about how best to select students, whatever age. But so with the back, the back cannot be developed or crafted independently of anything, of everything else, right? So, you know, those of you that understand the five points of placement. So the way this works, again, it, it gets a little bit tricky for a bit. But once you have established your core, your hips and your legs, and the legs are working against all of that, right? It's a leverage game. Then you can begin to develop the back against those bits, okay? And that's the only way to do it, right? That's, there's an order to things. But once your back gets strong enough, and you'll, this is where Svetlana's at right now, to where you can hold your back and hold your core and hold your hips and stretch your legs against all that, once your back gets to a certain point of strength, what you find is, so you've basically, with your back and your core, you've lifted sort of your weight, like the, the head, your organs, all of our weights in the top, right? Off the hips, see? Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna feel like your hips are a little bit loose again because there's more room for turnout now, more room to, to solidify that whole thing. And your legs are gonna feel a little loose because your legs get used to pushing against the hips, which get used to this coordination with the core 
and the back's just kind of there for a little bit, you know, do a few things, but it's basically the back's not doing that much in the beginning. Once it begins doing its job, now you have to shift your attention down your body, right? The core pretty much stays the same, but the hips, there's more room now to tighten everything up. And then ultimately the most awkward part is feeling your legs straight and uh, connected to the hips. This is where things get a little goofy for a little bit, like we're talking about a week or, or two, you know, if that. So basically, you know, the way this goes is you get used to a certain kind of feeling, right? Like I said in the last podcast, there's an unfamiliarity that, that keeps coming up as you develop, and particularly if you develop quickly. So you, you get this feeling that this is my standing side and I've got it all sorted out. Then your back gets stronger and suddenly it doesn't feel so solid anymore. But that's just a temporary feeling because, again, if, especially if I'm in the room, you, okay, we've got to tighten everything up. And then you'll reestablish that a similar feeling, not exactly that feeling, but a better feeling. And this is the way in which we free our legs to move and, and do all the things you want to do. Um, the back, however, once coordinated with everything, this is essential for anything like plie releve, particularly coming down. All of the issues that, you, that I see in dancing, in general, not just ballet, just dancing, is anytime you are coming down, so obviously for ballerinas on point, this is a massive deal because they're, they're up on point. But for guys, the same thing, or dancing in flat for ladies, it's the same thing. Anytime you come down, that's when things fall apart, okay? And again, we're gonna get into all this in great detail in, in the Institute and you know, you'll understand. But that's basically what this is, is that quality of movement, that, that lightness, right? That kind of light dancing, it, it looks effortless. It's not effortless, it looks effortless, is true, core, the coordination of core, hips, and legs, but the back is really uh, the linchpin for all of it. The back is really what does the work at a certain point, once it can do it. So there's some stuff to get into here, not for the podcast, um, but that's the back. And What's interesting to me, uh, we'll see if you find it interesting yourselves, but it, it's, we're, we're down, with Svetlana, we're down to millimeters. Not even millimeters. We're, we're down to mm -hmm, a spectrum, let's call it this, like a spectrum of engagement. So her back m may not actually move that much anymore. So if I give her a correction, like your back, it doesn't even really move, it doesn't move anymore but it engages more. So there's a difference between moving something and engaging it. So you need to engage it before you move it and while you move it the whole time. But when you're talking about the initial setup of the back, let's say, or the hips, there's levels of engagement. And what, how this works is so the stronger your back gets, the stronger your hips can get if you understand how to ratchet that up and core and legs follow the same principle, right? So the stronger your back gets, the stronger everything else also must get, but can't, you can't develop it more without the back. But you can't even begin to develop the back without the rest, you understand? So this is why I mean puzzle is just the perfect way to look at this, I think. And there's nuance here, and this is, you know, this is what this is, it's the game we're playing. So. That's just a brief description of the back. And uh, so this is going to occupy quite a bit of the institute. But just keep in mind that you, you cannot, you, you, the development intellectually that has to happen here is that we stop looking at individual parts of the body, right? You really have to, as a teacher, I'm saying, is you, you have to look at the whole system. Look at it like a system, really. It's, it, 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 so when I'm in the studio, I'm not really... I'm not looking at... I'm looking at the body as an instrument, really, like an instrument, like a musical instrument, an instrument that needs crafting and tuning and refining, always, because that's really what, what it is. So it's an instrument. Look at your body if you are the dancer or if you're a teacher as an instrument 
that requires a certain way of crafting, tuning, refining. And this is what it is. And it, it's just an ongoing process, you know. Now, at a certain point, you will peak and you'll have what you are capable of having in terms of technique and quality of movement. But there's always, I mean, it's just, it's ongoing, though, to keep that quality there. And the back is just, the back is just the, like I said, the linchpin to all of it. All of, so that, to the quality of movement that we desire. Okay? Okay. That's it for the back and more will be on the Institute. All right.